SMT Nation, we back, and we got the T-Mobile earnings. These are the, I guess, the details from the press release from T-Mobile. You can actually find this at Business Wire. You could find it on their PDF as well. It's on their uh, investor homepage. So they delivered industry-leading postpaid service revenue and cash flow growth in Q2 2022, raising guidance across the board. All right, so what's going to happen here is we're going to be seeing some major movement, I think, pre-market and then moving forward. There's going to be some things that people like. Starting first with financials, just really quick. Service revenues, $15.3 billion. It grew 6% year over year. People are going to like to see that. The free cash flow, $1.8 billion, grew 5% year over year. It says best growth in industry and raising guidance. I think that's what the market is probably going to respond to there. Now, in terms of the actual, like, postpaid, you know, the growth and things like that, the, the actual network usage and stuff, let's get into that. We care more about those things. Industry-leading growth in postpaid and broadband customers. Postpaid net account additions of 380000 increasing 32000 year over year. Postpaid net customer ads, $1.7 million, increasing 380000 year over year. Postpaid phone net ads, uh, we had 723000 increasing 96000 year over year. Postpaid churn came in at 0 0.80. All right, so that's pretty good. That's, that puts them really close to both Verizon and AT&T, which came in at 0 0.75. Prepaid, they had 146000 added, uh, net ads. Prepaid churn was 2.58, lowest in company history. That's really nice to see. Uh, AT&T also reported really good prepaid churn. So, you know, Verizon was showing losses in prepaid. AT&T and T-Mobile showing gains. In terms of their home broadband, 560,000 net ads. That is a record high. T-Mobile now has 1.5 million high-speed home internet broadband customers. Total net customer additions for the quarter, 1.8 million 450,000 year over year in terms of additions. They now have 110 million postpaid net customers. All right, so th this is a huge quarter, exactly what we predicted, even better in some ways than I think we predicted. Um, just a couple more things to kind of look at. They In the, re the actual earnings report, they mentioned the price lock against AT&T and Verizon, you know, just trying to kind of emphasize why they compete so well and why they do so well. Internet freedom, uh, launching that as a disruptor for home broadband, coverage beyond keeping customers connected on their Wi-Fi flights, uh, access and stuff like that. Ookla open signal, Umlaut as their network excellence, specifically their extended range 5G now covering 320 million people. The 5G UC, the ultra capacity 5G, now reaching 235 million people and expected to reach 260 million by the end of the year and 300 million through next year. No easy task to do, but they're shooting for the stars. They are going to go ahead and raise merger synergies. They're going to guide on that, they're going to increase that, and that's probably going to make investors very happy. So be on the lookout for. With the improved guidance, I know they laid off a lot of people, fired a lot of people, got rid of positions and redundancies. Investors don't care. They'll respond positively to, positively to that with cash flow increases as well as other financial elements. I'll talk more about this in the podcast tonight. There is a lot to discuss here, a lot of good. Uh, we'll see what kind of questions that they field and things that they answer during the question sesh, uh, which should be happening shortly. At the time of this recording here, it's like, seven in the morning eastern podcast tonight stay tuned we'll cover more of these details at that time thanks for watching like share subscribe for more and see you guys later on the next video peace